Welcome back, Anaheim. You just saw some of the top plays from our first day here yesterday, but now we need to talk about what is coming up next on the main stage, and that is going to be Optic Gaming versus Phase Clan. This is a huge matchup. It is sure to be so exciting. But I want to focus on Optic a little bit first. They've been looking hot, Study. They were undefeated yesterday. Phase Clan's not. They're looking really strong. What do you think about them? Last two times these teams played, it was a 3-0, then a 3-2. It means FaZe has definitely progressed on getting better. I just think Optic Gaming is going to be way too strong, not in the respawns, but in the S&Ds. They are overall 16-5 since London, and FaZe are 6-13. If they're going to be able to win this series versus Optic Gaming, it has to start with that second map. If they're able to pull that out, it'll turn out to be a great series. Yeah, and you can see this here, this recent matchup from Week 7 of Division A Pro League, where Optic Gaming did take it, Map 5, over Phase Clan. Yeah, and they win two search and destroys, like exactly what Study just said. They have to win that game, too, for me, because like Phase, they're going to have to get momentum early on in that series. Probably going to have to be that search and destroy, because they know if it gets to that Game 5, Optic's going to be very strong. Yep. And it's pick your poison with Optic Gaming. You got Payload, you got Frequency S&D. Those are two maps that Optic is extremely strong at, and you have to play them on one of them. You can't get rid of both. So that's pretty much a guaranteed map loss in the series for them. So Phase have a lot of work to do here. All right, let's look at our Totino's epic matchup. These are stats from Anaheim for both of these teams. Their records for Optic Gaming and FaZe Clan. You can see them right there. Hardpoint S&D looking a little better for Optic than FaZe Clan. Same for Control, really strong for Optic. FaZe was like undefeated in Control coming into this. So yeah. They, yeah. they need to step that Control game back up because that's something they used to secure. For me, if FaZe is going to win this, I'm looking at Celium. Scraps, or Zero said that Celium is the best player he's ever played with. He's an amazing talent for sure. The last time they played at London, Selium had a .48 KD, a .48 in the series against Optic Gaming, and I think that uh, that had a lot to do with the crowd in, uh, in London getting behind Optic and getting to Selium. He's seen it now. He's gone through it. I expect I expect him to step up, up from that performance because last time he just did not have it. Yeah, he so needs to have it. In he that needs to have it. Yeah. Time. Just but he has the, progressed a lot. Yeah, no, he over, has, but it's the crowd pressure. It gets to people. That's fine. It's just over the time at two weeks, well, over the time at Pro League for the two weeks, they went 6-1. and one. He was building so much confidence throughout that time. Him and Scraps putting on absolute performances. And then coming into here, you have to be confident. There's no way you go from 6-1 to one and then just come in here with another point four. I'm expecting him to have a great series. Well, we will see if they can do it. Who is going to come out on top, Optic versus FaZe? We're going to hand it over to our casters, Merck and Maven. Thank you so much, Joe. We are in for a good one. Optic, FaZe, two of the biggest brands in the history of Call of Duty. I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is going to be everything that we want from it. Yeah, I mean, Optic Phase always always a great matchup, but Optic has dominated it recently. They really have. And I think it is a matchup thing. I mean, Optic's such a great respawn team, but it's really that search and destroy. The desk was talking about it. Phase, it's what they struggled in the Pro League, and that has continued. And now you have, well, a control that's starting to slip on up, but Optic, they just look so strong throughout this week. Well, let's take a look at the hard point leaderboards because Dashi in particular has been insane. He's number one with a 1.5 KD through five maps. And the hard points is what stuck out to me instantly. Because if I know Optic, their top two maps, their go-to for map one is either going to be Frequency or it's going to be Hacienda. Yep. They played Frequency map one every single series. The only loss coming to Denial. Phase pick Hacienda then, which they've been good at. They're 2-0. But that is a top two hard point map for, for Optic. That, that is what is scary for me. And if Bruce can keep playing the way he is in the respawns, this could get scary quick. Well, that was the quote from yesterday, right? If we're going to win this tournament, we have to win a frequency hard point. After they drop that map one against units, they still win that match in a game number five. But after that, they're able to win a couple. Things are starting to look better. So, you know, maybe they, they just get that first map loss out of the way and face those mistakes. And on the other side of the stage, one thing that's worth noting for FaZe, Straps didn't have a Scraps-esque performance maybe yesterday, but he was here, I believe it was at 10 a.m. Pacific. So what, it's 3 o'clock now, five hours before his match. He was here shooting bots, here getting prepped, here getting warmed out. I think it was Bryce Tackle that saw him early yeah, and tweeted it out, but... When I was playing 1v1s, I warmed up in the back a little bit. At the time, it was probably, I don't know, 1040. He killed 700 bots in the free-for-all that I was in. So, so Scraps is ready. You would think, you would think. But, but I, I think the Dash was talking about it. The pressure got to phase last time. We'll see if they can handle it better. They've continued to get better at the Pro League. They went to a game five against Optic. The difference is, is none of those maps are in this series. It is a complete new map set. One of the greatest rivalries in the history of Call of Duty Esports. 
perhaps going to be reborn today. I know you mentioned it hasn't been that close as of no. late, but this is a new look phase team. A roster on the hunt, many considering them in the top four and a team with a chance to make a run to a championship. Unfortunately for them, by getting second in the pool, they got to try and go through Optic first, and that is just no easy task. No, it, it is not. We're going to take a, a close look at a couple of players that we touched right. on already, but it's going to be Dashi versus Selium. Selium has been stellar in every single game mode, but he's been the only one. You've had Scraps and Zero in the respawns, but Look at that search and destroy, 1.36. He's number three in the damage per round. He has to have a big game, and this is what we're talking about. Because in London, the desk talked about game number two. If he doesn't play well in search and destroy, being one of those hard carries, it'll just be a little bit too easy. What for about the on the other side with Dash? Are you surprised to see that like 0.78 in search from a guy that, you know, when they get their championship win, he's number one, number two with TJ? No, because uh, I think that was one day. I, I think we okay. all know what Dashy is capable of in search and destroy. You accepting to maybe pick the stat up a little bit today? Yeah, I, I'm not worried <laughs> about it. We know how consistent of a player he is. But I will tell you what, the map is loading on up. We had a bit of a restart, but we're getting into it here soon. A lot of people excited for this. Yeah. I think so, Joe. It's, yesterday was kind of business as usual outside of what? Maybe basically two upsets. Maybe it elevates upset. And who else do we have? Like I think the six. E six run? Yeah. yeah, but outside of that, pretty much what you would expect. Now is where you expect the swings to come in. You already have Jin G with the upset over E United. Can FaZe pull off something here against Optic Gaming? But let's get it rocking. Map one, FaZe Clan, Optic Gaming. Well, not a good start for Optic. Asim with three, Zuma with the fourth. Dashi falls off the map, and that's a clean five dead for Optic Gaming. But it was Asim. I mean, that Sog, we've talked about how he's been getting better and better already with three to start the game. Well, let's see how long they can continue to con control. It's Optic long. Gaming <laughs> coming in with the quick break. Dashi maybe off the map in the first push, but this time locates three, doing his best to impersonate the opening break from Asim. And Optic Gaming will get in. Now they'll try and get the hold, maybe influence the spawns as they head towards Orange. It's Crim6 with the KN trying to lock it down back alley, but it's Selium that has his number. Selium, one of the bigger series of his young career. He's got to have a big performance here against Optic Gaming. Yeah, because it was such an early break phase right away already on that rotation, but they do a good job. It's these kills right here. Can they stay alive? Dashi in a good position. His grenades on point yesterday. Zuma does find Krim on rotation. You have a seam pushed out middle of the map. This should be a good hold behind that cluster as well. But a 10 point lead right now, but here comes Optic Gaming trying to fly on in. So far, so good for FaZe inside of Orange. Karma has maybe found a timing to get into the back. Can he take his one on ones? Not going to happen as he gets flanked as well. As he tries to get the push towards spawn. Selim was getting very close to streaks. Multi kills yet again for Dashi, but it's a seam coming in through mid map that's able to clean it up. All but a tie game with 30 seconds remaining inside of Orange as Optic Gaming sending one more push at this before going for the rotation. If they can contest and keep FaZe locked in the back, what a big transition this can be. Yeah, the big thing as well, it's not really the time. It's keeping that spawn for FaZe, controlling middle of the map. That's why Dashi just trying to stay alive, has the help of Scump. Just watch where those white arrows spawn. You'll see Karma already on that rotation. You have TJ working top map right now. And you'll see his phase, a seam and scraps trying to work this elevator side. A seam grappling in as well. Maybe trying to catch a timing, but a perfect rotation for Optic Gaming. 10 point lead for FaZe Clan. Optic Gaming with the rotation of blue. We'll see how long they can hold. Let's toss it right to an Astro Gaming listen with Optic Gaming. One more window. One more window. You one more window. You one more window. You one shot. You one shot. Zero. Hami's in window. Hami's window. Challenge. Hill. Stun Hill. Half Stun Hill. Half Stun Hill. He's window, window there. Nice, window, they're gonna be window, 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 one shot sell. Absolute, absolute window. 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 Pick up those spawns. One shot, one shot, you, one shot, you. Two window, two window, I think. Keep watching window, keep watching window. Just playing, I gave up left. Outer you, outer you, outer you. Yo, zero's going window, zero's going window, I'm zero. One more, one more. I better go flat, I better go up right here. I got both. No, fight to the spawn. He's gonna be flat. He's weak, flat, I punched. He jumped out. Nice, nice job, yo, KK, okay, okay, get ready to go oh, jungle. Yeah, why is there One guy flank and come back jungle. I'm flanking, I gotta get this ice here. Okay. Oh, fuck it, where is it at? We're double, me and Teach are double pinching red side. That's fine, I'm gonna take my time. Yo, he's here, he's here in there. I saw him on far, Teach. Teach, I'm about to slide. Close left, close, close left, close left. Ah, uh, he's close left on Eddie. Nice, one more in the jungle. He's going in the jungle. Okay, I'll go in there, blue in there, there's two. 
It's four down for Optic Gaming. His phase now set up inside of pipes and trying to hold. And remember, where the slow start started for Optic Gaming yesterday was the first hard point of the day. It was frequency hard point, and it was against competition that is not the same as phase. So they have really got to start clicking. They're going to pull away this game. Yeah, but I thought they did a wonderful job at blue base. I mean, phase put a little bit of contest in there. I thought maybe an over challenge early on from TJ towards the elevator, but they're able to get back into the game phase with a very small lead. We'll see the Crash Slam able to connect with two. Asim having a big game already, able to find the third as well. A 15 and 10 start from him. We'll see if he can keep it up. <laughs> and you gotta love to see that out of Asim. What kind of numbers can he put up through map one? But now, let's focus on the second set of rotations. It's Craps and try inside trying to do damage. A team kill through for Optic Gaming, but they're able to clean up the scrap. A seam now 345 off streak, some work to do, but the assist comes in, can't quite get away with his life as Crim6 cuts him down. Now Zero's POV as he's trying to dance inside of Elevator. A fantastic shot melee to keep him up. Another one through as well as Karma's gonna fall. And that's an early opening for FaZe Clan. Yeah, taking a look as well as a specialist. Nothing really in Dashy, I believe, just to, to pop the Tempest. You're gonna hear that go off. Able to connect with one, but Celium right back on up. This is the only one they have. Celium actually uses his Tempest as well. So it's Tempest on Tempest. He's able to connect with one. That player will get taken care of, but Optic not able to break on through. Zero gonna find the Lightning and the Hellstorm, a 50-point lead now for FaZe. What a great rotation from that pipe till the elevator. And remember, the series we casted for Optic, the frequency, wasn't it Crim6 that dominated? Like, yeah. he had an incredible, incredible map one on frequency. Right now, 5 and 13, so he's really got to pick it up. But that has been one of the highlights of FaZe. Even when we casted them yesterday, in every mode, they're so good at efficiently getting streaks. The uses may not have been the best yesterday, but they're great at getting them. Zero and a seam combined to knock down four. They've got the back. Look how far out Optic is spawning because you have a mid-map presence from Zuma and Scraps. They've got a high tail at the entire way across the map. This is a fantastic sequence from Phase. That was such a big hold by a seam in zero towards the backside. Optic Gaming got the split spawn that they wanted behind the nade of Dashi, but they were able to hold on. It was a three versus five. Karma able to find one with that grass land, but it's a seam again. It just feels like every single engagement he's finding two on a force free. TJ finds the kill with the war machine. He shuts that down. So all the specialists on this first rotation for Optic Gaming have not found a lot of great use. Well, all the time you look for that pairing, like that ICR and that sub that are going off together and dominating the map at different ranges. Look at Zero and a seam right now. They have been crushing the lead, continuing the build. Let's go right to a phase clan. Astro Gaming, listen in. Everybody calm down. Everybody, we're good. We're good. I'm going to I'm going to I'm I bet 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 I I I I I I Who's bad in you, bro? Who's bad in you, bro? Who's bad in you? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
is not the start you want if you are Optic. We saw a similar start yesterday to kick off day one of Anaheim, but now against much superior competition. How impressed were you with FaZe throughout that first map? I mean, you heard in the listen, it was just calm, cool, collected. Obviously, Scraps getting hyped on. Yeah, them, yeah, yeah. They, they just played to their game, right? I, mean, I felt like all the specialists were great from them, the teamwork. But I mean, when it comes down to it, you're going to win respawns when everybody's positive. I, it's just a fact. So for the side of Optic Gaming, uh, a slow map one. They did this yesterday. The big story, the big question mark on FaZe Clan is going into this map number two, going into this search and destroy. You have an opportunity now to go up 2-0 in a series. It doesn't matter if you're Optic. If you get a 100-point club to map one, if you tie it up one to one and go into that control, this is the game mode where FaZe has to improve. Well, as we take a look at the last 30 seconds of that game one, there's not a ton to highlight here as it was a bloodbath, it was a blowout and phase incinerated Optic Gaming. But as we start to look forward to the map two, do you have maybe a key to victory or key to improvement for FaZe if they're going to take it? I, I think one of the, the big things that we saw from FaZe is they tried a lot of times playing around that map pressure but they were just getting caught. They have to make those mid-season or mid-game adjustments for off the gaming. When they've had great S&D tournaments, it was, they were being the one pushing the limit, right? They were the one pushing it on the map. And now, are you gonna do that? Is that your attitude going into a game number two where you just got smoked, but you see that, I mean, you have single digit points on two hills, two and four dominated by FaZe. And that's really the difference maker in that map number one. And we're going to be going to what? Arsenal up next. So the one good thing for FaZe, yes, in the Pro League you lost the two search and destroys, but none of these are the same maps that we saw in that particular series. So Is you're that a good thing for FaZe? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, yeah, I guess if you lose, you can prove on things, but at least you're, you're going to a map you didn't just get beat on. Well, you're going to a map that is very known for Dashy, right? And the That's sniper true. rifle. Who is going to step on up now? Zero, Zero had, has had some, had some he, plays. He's had some good search and destroy maps on this, but... I mean, we did see, I guess, one bright spot was Dashy had some critical moments, still positive, has been positive in every single respawn. So we talked about how he has that .78. This is the map where he can turn around and search and destroy. And he's got to. They've got to rebound here and tie up this Series 1-1. Like, we know Optic can pull off the reverse sweep. They did it yesterday, but Units is not face time. They are not in the same category right now, so you just cannot afford to go into that 0-2 hole. You got to bounce back. And yeah, I think a lot of pressure on on the young guys you brought on this team to be the search and destroy phenoms. That's TJ, that's Dashy. You need big plays. Yes, across the board, absolutely. If coming off a performance like we saw a balanced effort from base Clan, but I think specifically those two young guys, they've got to be big here in map two. Well, and I, I just think really the story throughout the year has been when it comes down to it in this winner's bracket, you have to be able to win a search, right? Like those searches just keep you in these series. Do not go down 0-2. You heard the energy that FaZe was bringing in that chat. They are confident right now. Shut them down, get it to a control where FaZe has been struggling. Yes, they were 7-0 in the Pro League, but since then at Anaheim, 1-2. We head to Arsenal. Optic buried in the map one. FaZe, all the momentum in the world after that first map, but now the pace is going to slow down. The strategy going to build as they try to get the better of a superior search and destroy team. The crowd now trying to get behind Optic as they desperately need to get in form here in map two. And this is what, uh, I mean, we were excited about for FaZe, though. Like, we knew they had the talent to do stuff like this. Well, I was worried about the hard points, but now after yeah. map one, like, okay, all right, all right, that's Optic's pick, and you come out in the 100-point club. You feel damn good about Hacienda as we get more into the series. But here we go, round one, underway. Zero versus Dashy, absolutely going to be one of the stories of this map, too, and it's Dashy that strikes first. Scraps gets caught. Yeah, Krim's going to line up, too, as well. A two versus five early on. And yeah, that's the thing. Search and Destroy, it is very much a different pace. As well, Optic, I, I think, you know, after that map one, winning and securing this first round, getting some momentum on their side. And you got to think, just with the pedigree of the players on Optic, the experience you have there, some of the most experienced players of all time. If anyone's going to brush off a 100-point club loss, and maybe this Optic Gaming lineup. Yes, you've got some new blood. You've got some young players. 
but you can't discredit what players like Crim6 will do to bring them back in this search and destroy, because he has a big round one. Yeah, you know he's not happy about map one, all right? He's typically yeah. a guy that, I mean, that motivates him. He hates losing so, so much. So a good start for him at 2-0, but now we'll see what can Zero find with his sniper rifle. We knew this was going to be the story. Dashy versus Zero. It's phasing a very aggressive towards this B site, but it looks like someone middle is watching that. That's going to be Scump watching the cross towards the window. This might be what Optic wants. Trying to set up this pinch, and he's going to spot all that information. Now look at FaZe and all the control that they're getting right now. Optic has to go. Well, zero. Be able to find that snipe. The rest of Optic, though, all inside events and towards middle of the map. This time, the sniper battle goes the way of FaZe. First blood to them. Can they now manage the 5v4? Is Optic looking for an opening? TJ able to answer. Zero gets isolated in the back. Can he get away with his life? Gonna get tagged up. He will get dropped. Karma there, able to get a kill and somehow stay alive. He's got three players looking at him, able to dip away into Vince, but the stun comes through, and Skump and Krim will fall. Suddenly, the vent, the cave, the only cover for Karma with under 30 seconds on the clock, but he has a chance in a one versus two, the problem being a bomb He's got a nade. in a very tough spot. He's got a nade maybe to open this thing up, but it's a scene with the saw who's going to be locking it in, and Selium going to clean him on up. Nice round I, I just face. don't think Optic was ready for four on the flank. They were so worried that the rotation was coming towards that B, B side. Yes, they pushed someone through lobby, but they're still expecting well, more players back stairs. You can see it from TJ's POV. Yeah, just how like, he's like playing. When he got the kill on a zero, and then he's worried about taking out a trophy, he's not even looking that direction yeah. as he gets picked up. So you can see just the advantage of having that much map control, that much information, how it paid dividends to FaZe. Yeah, it almost felt like Optic was playing blind in a sense. Yeah, I mean, Scump sees one, but I, he doesn't see three others. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll get us tied up at one apiece. A snipe for Dashy, a snipe for Zero. That'll be our first bloods in the early going. Who's going to be able to connect this time around? Some damage from Dashy, but a kill does not come through as he hightails it to get towards the back block and get eyes on this push developing, but there's a first blood. Optic Gaming Karma connects with the ICR, early controlled Optic Gaming. Yeah, but it looks like this is a bit of a fake. You see three players towards that A side. Can TJ find this player on the bomb? The bomb about halfway. He's going to peak scrap, able to find the kill. TJ just playing for the information. So FaZe were just throwing a fake towards the B side, trying to open up A, but nobody watching over scraps. Could be another perfect round for Optic, because it's just Zero and Zuma remaining. Dash, he's going to find Zero all on the Zuma. Zuma tucked away dark. Crim6 has his number, but Zuma able to win the one-on-one. -on -one. Still four more players to go through. As Dashi hits the shot, ends the round. Advantage back to Optic Gaming. He's pretty good with that thing. Yeah, we've seen some wild snipes already this weekend. A couple from Simp. Octane's had some crazy ones. Dashi, zero in the conversation as well for best snipers in the game, but he needed to step it up for this game too. You saw the .78 coming into this. Right now, three and one. Hot start from him. Him and TJ leading the way, six and two combined. Now they'll get back to offense. Once again, an opportunity for a snipe on the other end. Dashy, peekaboo in the outer lane at artillery as well. His optic gaming start to layer up the map. Look for an opening towards B, and there's the shot. Dashy once again connects. A seam, though, still on this B side, but you have so much map position in so inside middle where that rotation is easy. You have Karma inside vents. You still have TJ watching the flank. So Zero going to try to play for in information, but they know. And look at middle of the map. It was Crim6 waiting for that flank. Zero able to snap on the one, but his teammates falling around him. Zuma trying to stay on up now. Can he find this player? Scuff continues to plant. Now it's a two versus two. Suddenly, very manageable for FaZe Clan. 2v2, 30 seconds on the clock, bomb down towards A. And you've still got a sniper on either side, and Dashy and Zero. And, and Zero just has to wait for Zuma. Zuma's just playing for that information, going on a bit of a Zuma flank. Has an A in his hand as well. He's in a spot one. He's going to let his teammate know they're rotating. Can Zero find that kill? They no! have to get he it. doesn't finish it! You Dashy! Have to find that kill! Dashy makes him pay now! A 1v2 for Zuma but there's not a lot of time on the clock. He might be able to catch him. It's going to be frag grenade out, but he's right in his face. The hip fire's good. There's the kill, but bomb does get planted. One versus one. Dashy versus Zuma. Dashy's got the strife. 
Can he come up with the clutch? The push is in, the shots are in, he's tagged up, has to back up. Zuma now aggressive to the edge, and Zuma takes the one-on-one -on -one with plenty of time to defuse. That's four kills in the round for Zuma. But well, that should not have been that. That should have been a way easier. Zero has to find that kill. I think he just stopped shooting. Well, I think, I, he thought the two bursts that went into Dash, he were clean, but they and, weren't. And then I thought Zuma was going to get caught when he had the frag grenade yeah. I thought Krim6 had a freebie, but somehow he comes out with that. And then, obviously, I mean, we know how good he is with the strife, but you'd love to have anything else in that particular fight for the one-on-one, -on -one, but nothing to take away from Zuma. What a round from him. Yeah, just a frustrating round. I, I'm not sure what the communication was from Optic Gaming, but he had a couple of players watching over the bomb. They get isolated. Scrum continues to, to resume the plant, and Krim is, is middle of the map. So definitely a, a round to go watch back for Optic Gaming. And a big win for FaZe. Just taking a look at the FaZe side. Scraps a win four. Well, that's what we talked about earlier. Like, yep. they've been so good, him and Zero, when you, you talk about the respawns, but haven't stepped up in the search. They're going to need scraps to get it going. Skunk takes the first, can't get the second. Karma watching over him, gets nice a kill trades. before he falls. But yeah, it's going to be an even trade. Three versus three. Bomb now in the hands of Celium. Is FaZe trying to figure out how they want to develop this next setup? And it looks like they're pushing through. Yeah, now what are they going to do? I was going to say, are they going to double on back? And that's what they're going to do. We'll see if they're able to t catch out TJ. Looks like FaZe going to go through the middle of the map. TJ watching the window hop up. FaZe, 30 seconds to work with. Krim just playing with Dashi right now. Really, that playmaker for Optic Gaming, it's going to be TJ. Dashi's going to jump on up, be able to find one. Where is the trade? Zero, finally, with the pistol, able to find it. But it's a one versus two, and he has to plant. Looking very unlikely is TJ, I think, going to spot him. Does find Krim, one versus one. But I think if you're TJ, you can probably just run away. He's not going to be able to get to that bomb. It's going to be close. Nope. Not going to get there in time. So Optic able to hold on. Zero. Almost with a clutch. We just saw Zuma pull one out of the hat. Zero with the chance, but time is against him. And I don't know if I like that run from FaZe, because I, I think you, you do the hard part. You get B control, and we always talk about how difficult Just it is get to the bomb find down, players. You're yeah, I mean, I think that's one of those things where then they decide to rotate, then they double back, they go through the middle. It, it seems like... Overthinking too, it, maybe? Yeah, maybe too complex of a round. You did the hard port part. You have B-side control. Just, just plan it. I mean, that's the advantage of five hitting a side, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can come away with the numbers. And, and very typically, it's hard to get that player off. Bomb, plus the trades that go your way. Optic, up 3-2. Pushing in for interlap control. Dashy given a shot, but not able to connect. Zero on the other side, just playing angles versus TJ outside event. Yeah, I mean, this has been all really just defensive rounds. We'll see who's going to win the first attacking. A slow round from Optic Gaming, rotating back and forth. The great thing for Optic throughout this entire map is they've had so much mid control. Zero is going to spot a couple, decides to just back on down, wants to play safe. And as soon as he sees that, you see at the top of your mini map, five and three, that's going to be a seam and Cillium going to hit that flank. Well, that big flank is what caught Optic Gaming, but early in that round one. Crim6 to round two. Crim6 with the first blood. Numbers to Optic. Dashy almost caught, but able to get away with his life. Now Bomb planted for Optic Gaming. It's a four on five. Make it three on five. Retake opportunity for FaZe Clan. Asim able to pick up one, but his teammate drops at the same instant. Zero with the challenge. The trade once again there for Optic Gaming. It's now an Asim in a 1v3. 25 seconds to work with. Not a prayer. He's outside the map. Krim able to find that first blood on the Zuma. That's the difference maker. If you're Zuma, uh, you, that round relies on the flank. You have to be able to stay alive back steps. Maybe just gets caught with his pants down. But there's that first offensive round winning. Well, that means two rounds for Optic Gaming. So they now lead four to two. Krim6 and Dashi have really been leading yep. that first blood conversation, whether it's been the sniper or the ICR. Oh, that first round, what he picks up two after Dashi hits the snipe. They've controlled the pace early and now find a little bit of separation, Joe. Krim6, he had a horrific map one, but what an answer here at eight and four. 
That's why it doesn't matter sometimes, you know, if you're such a great search and destroy team, what happens in map one to be able to bounce on back? We'll see if they can close it out. Dashy trying to get fancy, but actually gets caught going for that wall bang. I see him gonna find one, and FaZe is gonna push on through. The aggression right at Optic Gaming. They find the first three kills. They just smoke them. They just run a train right through that back line of Optic Gaming. They get the massive advantage. And now it's Tej and Crim6. What can they do from this spot? Bomb now planted at B. Still one on bomb. Finally gonna spot him, but it might be too late. The trade comes through instantly. Crim6 can't finish the kill. And now he should be isolated with the four players from phase. Yeah, just trying to run away. Still able to find some kills. Not much you could do. Not you, much would you, do. you would love to give that last kill to Scraps, because right now, still sitting at 0-6, maybe just find a kill, get him going a little He's bit. Like, Come on, guys! Set me up for one! But I mean, this round starts with a seam. I, I mean, he just, I mean, Dashy goes for that little snipe through the wall, and I think that's what catches him. TJ was on the rotation ba back, but maybe, maybe that just, little hesitation. Just didn't expect it to be that quick, yeah. and they just flew. Yeah, because what a lot of teams do, they play for that lobby, and then they split A. They typically don't go B. We very rarely see that. A huge round for FaZe to bring them back within a round. Zero's POV with the snipe. Can he hit another shot? He's been dealing with TJ, peeking him from that backside vent throughout the entire game. And this has been what Opti, Opti has been doing on offense, controlling middle of the map, then deciding what do we want to do. But FaZe go back to that round one strategy. A lot of pressure on that flank. Selium inside window, going to find the first blood. Zero has some help. Asim going to get taken down. A big kill by Skump on the flank. That could have been the round. It could have been a five versus three. Instead, 4v4. Phase very spread out. They have to be careful here. They do not have the numbers on this side of the map. Zero is going to find the trade, but now has to play his life. He's able to get away. Group up with Celium. Three versus three. Bomb getting planted. Optic will get it down. You've now got one on the flank in Zuma, two back towards their base, and Celium and Zero. Celium wins a nice one on one at the steps. The trade not there as Dashi can't get the angle. Scump just barely gets away with his life. Dashi gonna re peek, able to take that fight now, two versus two. Scump takes out Celium Zero with the RK7. Left the whole load, can't <laughs> connect on the shots. I got Scump worried. I thought the nade was gonna blow Scump up right there. It was close. It, it was, was close. very close. But once again, in a, another two versus three situation for FaZe. I don't know, just the timings were a little bit off, right? Zuma's coming on that flight. They have to be able to time it. But such a great job from Scum to stay alive inside lobby. Able to get away from that first gunfight was yeah, really the, the That one-on-one -on -one was everything yeah. for you? Yep. Just completely clears so, that I mean, first ball off the board. If a seam finds that kill as well, that's bomb down. On the opposite side of the map with 50 seconds to work with. One more round needed for Optic to tie up this best of five at one apiece. Mid-map control getting it from Optic Gaming. It's zero that hits the shot. The repeak and challenge almost cost him a Crim6. Not able to finish the deed. TJ brings it to 4-4. The, they got window control. The aggression came well. in quickly. And Dashi now on the flank. Scrap's not ready. If Scrap struggles, continue into map two. And now look at the map position from Optic Gaming. Zero. What a big shot that could have been. But it's through the wall, into the thigh, and cannot connect for the kill. Still advantage. It's Optic. Yeah, 45 seconds to work with. Krim just playing his life towards this B site. Really the only player here just trying to play for information. He's going to find oh. it. Asim stays alive. Krim just wanted to find one. If he gets traded out, that's fine. Instead, it's a one for zero for FaZe, forcing the three versus three. And I think they have the information that they have this side. This is going to be a tough retake for Optic. Here they go. Zero finds an ICR. Selium gets some damage in, but not able to finish one. Still a three versus three. They're just going to hop onto it. They're going to have to try and get him off. They're able to do that. The ICR in the back, and Selium rips him off the defuse. Dashy last guy up. Selium, a big close to the round. They survive to extend this map to. Yeah, the last two rounds have really just come down to a couple of sequences for. Optic Gaming, it was Asim versus Skump. Right there, it was just Krim. If Krim finds a kill onto Asim on that bomb, I think it was one bullet away. That round is, is done and dusted. Yeah, he's having a lot of tight rounds, right? Yeah. Really going through that mid-game to late-game. 
see in either team make huge adjustments with Selium. And again, you're going to a round 10. A lot of eyes on scraps right now. 0 and 8, but it doesn't matter. He, if he can step up these last two rounds, he can give them the map lead, go up 2 0 in the series, but it starts right here. Finally, some mid pressure from FaZe. They're going to counter this. Here we go. Scraps going to find a kill. Able to snap on the one, but Karma with the nade. But the trades are here. Selium, though, being chased. He gets away. He's alive. He gets away. Selium somehow gets out with his life. Now 2v2. Zero and Selium have the clutch to get this two around 11. Zero with the angle finds the kill. TJ will see you later. And now oh, that time. it's all on Dashy to try and clutch this 1v2 to close it out. One good thing for Dashy, you're going to have two separate one on ones right now. He might catch Zero out inside that dark corner. He's going to spot him. Zero, though, just runs away. Dashy not ready for it. He's going to give the call out. Zero trying to play his life. Here comes the pinch out of Selium. Now the two one-on-ones seems to be a distant memory as Dashi continues to hunt under 30 seconds on the clock, trying to get back and acquire this bomb, which is down mid. And sometimes in this spot, you'll see the teammates kind of hunt together. They've split and picked the yeah, site. They're, they're just playing for info. I, I think Selium's watching B. Zero's just trying to maybe peak A as best as he can. Here we Should go. Should have it. Should be around 11. Catches him on bomb. A nice 2v1 from FaZe. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going the distance. It finally phase. I love that play call out of them. They go middle of the map. They've been giving it up round after round. Optic has been taking advantage of it, but four hit it. And Selium's ability to stay alive in that two versus two, so important for phase. Right, just to slide away to the pillar. He gets tagged up again, I think, as he gets through the doorway to lobby. Just somehow, somehow gets out of harm's way. And then it's zero that finds the final two. But now it's round 11. Phase go right back to this middle setup. And Optic Gaming getting aggressive up towards A. They're going to need a lot of information here. Watch that number nine. That's TJ. Nobody watching Vance. Dashy, I think, gets some bad timing. They're going to push on out. They're going to catch him. They're going to catch him. They're going to catch him. Bo Zuma with two. The movement through Vance pays off. 5v3 for FaZe. And a chance to take a 2-0 edge. TJ can't finish the kill and has to dip away. Now the back step. Swoosh comes in. Scott able to take down one. Karma going to fall. Two players left. One player left. It's all left on the king, and he gets swarmed. FaZe Clan up 2-0. And I think you saw a zero right there towards the end. Get a lot of love to Selium. I, I don't know if it was the play calls that he was making or the plays he was making in game, but I, I will say a couple of those offensive rounds, they found the gaps, they found the openings, they knew what Optics was doing, they adapted, and they clutched when they needed to. Not often that you, that you see two players hitting through events, but wow, does it pay off. A rough timing for Dashy. But they make a base. Scraps is looking at the screen like, I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> yeah, but this is it. I mean, watch this timing right here. Well, never mind. We're actually going to miss the first couple of kills. Scump does find one. Scraps, he stays alive. Selium again finding those kills, finding those openings. Well, after Zuma got the first two, I mean, every other situation was like a three on one, right? Best case scenario, you're getting one kill and getting dropped. It was all Zuma. And you see how hyped he is on the main stage. Phase firmly in control of this best of five. I don't know if anybody saw the first two maps going down this way, but Joe, FaZe, yeah. playing for their life right now. Yeah, and I think you get, you get the performance you need out of, out of Selium and Zuma, both in double digits right there. Zuma really early on was that guy, but then towards the back half of the game, it was Selium. And you've talked a lot. I mean, that, that was the key to the series for a lot of us, right, it was game two. You talked a lot about the control. Faze had been so good in the Pro League, 7-0, but 1-2 so far at Anaheim. If Optic's going to pull off another reverse sweep, it starts here. It's the map three. It's up next. The Call of Duty World League is brought to you by TCL, America's fastest growing TV brand. And Scuff Gaming, the official controller of the CWL.
Welcome back to Anaheim, and wow, our series so far, if you saw this map set go again, I think you felt very, very good for Optic Gaming. But FaZe come in, they smoke Optic on their hardpoint pick, they take the round 11 search and destroy, they're up 2-0. And now we go to control. And we've seen Optic, they've already pulled off a reverse sweep. They've started slow, they've brought it back. But FaZe, man, they are clicking, Joe. Yeah, I mean, Optic Gaming, they, they had that two round lead in game number two, and then they just let it slip, right? Going into a 5 4 phase clutch on up, able to find the openings on the offensive rounds. But if you're an Optic Gaming fan, the good thing for you, Optic Gaming in control. They are better at open events. It's just something that they continue to improve on. And you can see it here, 83% win why, rate. Why do, you, why do you think it's so staggeringly different? I think that's a communication thing, right? Maybe intensity at Pro League. Intensity, yeah, that's what it would be for me. Yeah, right, sort of playing your lives. Maybe you get a little bit lazy at, at Pro League, where here you're playing your lives a little bit more. Have so. you ever had a team where you were like way better at the event versus like for your online squad or land league squad? Well, I, I never played in a land league. That sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, Joe. Yeah. That's hey, you had a long time. and beautiful career. By the way, yeah. happy birthday, Joe. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're yeah. The birthday boy. Yeah. To many more years to come. To many more years casting Call of Duty. There we go, baby. Control. Gridlock. Next up, Optic have got to get the win if they're going to keep this series going. We already saw one of the favorites knock to the losers in the United. Optic now at risk. Granted, they're going against one of the top teams and one of the favorites maybe at this tournament, but I'll tell you what, Optic Gaming fans, they need you right now. They're in a big hole, headed into the control. Optic's been down 0-2 in a series already this weekend, right? Their first match of Friday, they're able to come on back. Does that help you? Like, already having done it once this weekend? Yeah, I surely? mean, it's a confidence thing, and I, I would say we looked at the map set. Like, if they win this game three, we, they go to a very comfortable hard point as well, but Optic right off the start going to try to put some pressure towards this B side, it's actually a bit of a split. And because the split push has worked out so well, you have one on A, you have Skump getting into a position on the flank, he can make a play. And they're not ready for him at yeah, all. Yeah, he's trying to find the opening. They're not ready for him at all. Trying to find the opening. Nobody's this could be turned. big, you just wait Nobody's for Skump turned. right now, you just wait for him. He's gonna find one, flies on out, can he find a second? No, but that should be the call for his team to push on up. The one kill, was it enough? Doesn't look like it. As a seam and Selly, I'm still able to make the plays. But on the other side, <laughs> you see Karma's out. chilling. I mean, he, I don't think he's fired a bullet yet. He's just racking up the objective points over towards A. You would have loved to have maybe a little bit more success towards B. But yeah, it's been free here. You do have a life advantage, though, if you're phase. Now you've got a hold for 2 minutes and 15 seconds. They've got three set up towards Broken. Two starting to work the flank. But is that... First push drops, you see that one in three, and TJ and Karma slow down for now. They're just building an opening towards back guard. Yeah, I mean, the, the first objective, you, you can't hit the flank yet. You have to have control of this broken building. Really, with that pinch, when it works, you have both sides uh, of the street. So they have to wait for them. Zero, though, is going to find TJ, but it's a seam still, just causing so much havoc with Celium towards this top street. We talked about two minutes and 15 seconds. That's already 30 off the clock. Plus, FaZe is up seven lives. A very controlled round. And I will say, I mean, we've seen some teams throw some lives at A. Maybe give that attacking team a, a life advantage. FaZe just said, you know what? Take it. We'll just hang on to B. And so far, it's worked out beautifully, but still a nice chunk of time. Three kills now go the way of Optic Gaming. Perhaps a chance to pounce. TJ all the way in the deep zone is going to spawn them out towards that A side, but they're able to come back, pick him up, and now get back towards the point. But it's Crim6 that picks up two. He will get wall banged and dropped, but a chance here for Optic to get in. Dashy, one before he falls. Skump into the mix. The clock now pauses. They're in and contesting. The spawn close for Optic Gaming is they keep trying to flood. It's Karma with two, who's still standing tall inside of the objective. Karma's going to pick up three before he drops, but kill after kill, despite the fact it feels like it's going to Optic Gaming and the reinforcement continue to be there for phase, but that one big life advantage now is dwindled. It's only one. Optic looks like they're pulling this off. Now three down for phase. The second bit of progress is done. Scump is pushed up towards the 18. Can't take his one-on-one, -on -one, but the objective is done. And Optic get on the board. I mean, the, the key there for Optic Gaming was just their ability to stay alive inside of Sushi, right? Just time and time again. 
there was a, a kill from Optic. There was no trade from FaZe. So uh, I think for FaZe, you have to work those trades a little bit better. You had the control all round long. I think after a Seaman Selium, you go down top of the street. Optic slowly work it up. But you're just used to trade after trade, and that scenario just doesn't come from FaZe. Well, I think about every fight went one for one outside of Karma. I think it was Karma that got three. That yep. was really a big part of why they were able to get a maybe a stronger foothold into Sushi. But it's a big opening round as they have faced two painful losses in different ways. A blowout map one, a grueling round 11, and Dashi now close to streaks. He's 75 off, so he's going to dip out, maybe look for a freebie. Exactly. And they've made it a fight here at A. And remember, we saw this at London, right? I think it was a couple of times where they were very good at holding on to A. Just time and time again, they would waste so much time off the clock. A lot of teams give it up like we just saw with FaZe, but Optic, for some reason, they're, they're darn good at holding A. Wasting time, giving themselves a life advantage. Dashi's gonna find that lightning strike. And now a three life advantage. Skump goes on the flank, staying alive inside. Sushi finds his second kill. Five life lead for Optic. A big sequence there from Optic. Now what can they do behind it? The streak's obviously gonna be massive down the stretch for Dashi. Snap a doodle do as he's able to flick the top window and take the one-on-one -on -one onto Zuma. Fantastic shots out of Dashi. Now Skump in a position to wreak havoc, perhaps in the back line of FaZe Clan. Layering it with him will be Crim6. Patrolling mid-map, you've got Karma. The point goes through for FaZe, but the trap seems to be here for Optic. Yeah, Skump just trying to stay alive. Not able to find a kill, but it has the help of Karma. 16 lives left for FaZe. Two minutes to work with, but the big thing, and we talked about it last round, you have to get control of your broken building. That's going to be tough. You have Karma up here. TJ watching hole, watching the flank with Skump. We'll see what Karma can find. Not able to find any. Nice teamwork, but Dashi's there with the nade. And Zuma, who had that Herculean effort in the map too, struggling to get something going into control. Right now, 2 and 11. Three and a half miles to go till he's able to pick up his TAC 5. He's really got to start to improve here if they're going to get it done. And they've got the seven life deficit. Salium doing what he can to make the play. Can't win his second one-on-one. -on -one. A bit of help comes in there, I think, in the form of TJ. Asim now cruising out. Another one-on-two. One by one. It's phase dropping, looking for an opening with 70 seconds remaining on the clock. You still have one player inside of post. Zuma doing his best to finesse, but eventually he will fall. Yeah, I mean, the face pushes right now just a little bit staggered. They are able to get on, on Sushi. But a grab slam able to connect as he's able to find two for Karma. And you'll see, I, I mean, you have the lightning come in. They're able to retake the site. The, the Hellstorm is used, but it doesn't matter. I mean, 16 to 7, such a big life lead. You would love to go up 2-0 in this map number three. Well, they're definitely poised to do exactly that. Karma tagged up and gets away. Trying to play for some streaks if he can get them too. Dashi exhausts both of his. He's now only 250 off. Maddox in hand as the next push comes in. Two have gotten into Sushi. Dashi looking over him. There's a freebie for Karma. 150 more points needed. FaZe doing a good job contesting to keep this clock at a standstill, but they just don't have the respawns remaining. Krim and TJ clear out both. Yeah, Karma's just trying to find a hit marker, get 100 points. I, I mean, but I, I guess one good thing is next round we know that FaZe, they don't like to defend another. A, so you can... Just get those 50 points off the objective if it comes down to that, but they're going to try to set him up, maybe. A little wall bang action, but Optic now up 2-0. Very clean control from them so far. You saw the stack going into this. They've been lights out in control yeah. of these major events, and you're seeing that again. And the guy that's going to head into round three, 50 points off streaks is Karma, and it started with the big grab slam into Sushi to stagger one of the big pushes from FaZe Clan. Karma has been stellar in this title. It's been fantastic to see him rebound this year with the turmoil and everything went down last year, showing he's still one of the best. Now you have one player over here, that's gonna be a C, maybe just playing for information, but again, because there's not anyone contesting this, Karma going to get these streaks right off this time. <laughs> It's There's actually, gonna be the lightning. It's actually wild to see Karma leading the way for Optic, considering the first, yeah, like, right. first 60 to 90 seconds of round one, he just stood over here and captured the point. But taking care of A. Still somehow 50 and six, and that'll get him the second streak. So now two more bits of artillery for Optic Gaming to work with. And a quick capture towards the A site. Now they try to push the back, zero and scraps, ready and waiting. Optic gonna have to do this in layers right now, just trying to work their way outside of the base. 
Zero and company doing a good job trapping them in. Yeah, and they did a great job in, in round number one. It just came when they got to be. That's when Optic stayed alive. Their teamwork really shined. And they will get there sooner or later. As Dash is able to find another one and then just backs on up. They want to get the top street control, get inside of Broken. Scraps, though, doing a good job. You have one player back alley as well. That's going to be zero, so they're able to find Scraps. Uh, and you might have more streaks coming in the way of Dashy here in a minute if he can make a play. Just think if you've got all these streaks. Oh, they're going to use a lightning, too. They got broken control. Now they're going to go. Streaks start to rain in. One's going to drop. Scump will slide across. Dashy now with the gunfight to get his streaks. It's Zuma that's able to shut that down. The kill's going the way of Faceland. That's three in a row. They survived the lightning, but still inside of 18 is Karma. Damon Barlow with a chance to at least keep this staggered until the reinforcements get there, but it's not going to happen. So for now, FaZe still survive, and that first big push from Optic gets shut down. Yeah, and that's good for FaZe, because the first big one didn't get shut down last time, but Dorigo dead. I see him, though, on the flank. Scraps just staying alive, waiting for time, waiting for his teammates to spawn on up. You have number three, that's Karma, going all the way around. Contest this here, but you're waiting for a seam. And well, the Hellstorm, this is not good for Optic. That should be two kills for a seam. It will be. So nothing out of the streaks. I mean, you find one kill with the lightning strike. Optic trying to put this away 3-0, but FaZe holding on. This has been very, very clean from FaZe. Incredible job surviving these streaks. This will be one of the final pushes now for Optic with 13 lives remaining. Karma the one to try and make a play in the back. He's got, I was about to say, Crimsix pushing up to give him a bit of assistance, but he gets cut down. Karma falls in the back. Three in a row there for FaZe Clan. It's now just nine lives remaining for Optic Gaming. Scump trying desperately to get there for the trade. He's on the hunt. Some nice movement from Zuma, but can't quite get out with his life. Now, the clock against you as well. 25 seconds to go. You've got the setup you'd like from FaZe. You've got pressure mid-map for the flank as well. That could be Scraps that can make the play at any time. As Scraps now starts to push in through Ice Cream, he should have an opening there. Dash is going to drop. You get three kills, but the flank falls apart. Karma wins a one-on-one. -on -one. That's at least going to keep the clock stopped He's for alive. now. Oh. It's a 5v10, but as they clear him out, the clock continues to dwindle. I mean, maybe if Karma's able to stay alive there, you force a grab slam, right? You still can stack all five bodies, but that grab, they will have it for round four. But now it's a bit of desperation mode. You go into an offense for phase. You have to be able to find an opening, but you're going to have a lot of tools to work with. Dashy. Just being a nuisance, able to find a couple of kills towards the end of the round. Yeah, not going to matter much unless somehow he changed that into streaks in this fourth round. But FaZe, fantastic job there in the round three, considering all the tools Optic had in their arsenal. They survived one after another and put up a stalwart defense. But now to get to a round five, they've got to get some to muster up some magic on offense. Curious to see what their opening hit's going to be. Yeah, looks like they're talking through it. Scraps, not the best game, too. But we know what he can do in those respawns. I think in Zuma as well, you know, we, start, we talked about he started off 2-11. He's 9-6 and six since that point. It looks like they will try to go towards his B side. They're going to send one person top middle. That's going to be Scraps trying to find an opening. Dashy there with the Tempest. Yeah, he's just going to punish the seam, able to find that kill. But here comes the hit towards B side. They've got the numbers. They're able to pick up two. And Should now be able it's going to be the spawners. Absolutely. You've got a chance to do some massive damage here on the B objective. They've got it. Three stack. There's the first bit of progress. The tip is going to fall as Dashy is going to get dropped. Optic now get back in and get control. So they're at least able to prevent them from getting two ticks onto that harder of two points at B. Phase continue to just split the defense up from Optic Gaming. They've got a battle on two fronts. Yeah, you have three players, though. I mean, this is really it. Yeah, Scraps just going to back away, wait for his teammates. What this will allow Optic to do, you can see three and five. Karma and Scump starting to get pushed up. Zuma with attack five. Well, able to find one, finds his second as well. Gives them a bit of control. They can work right off this momentum from A. You have the attack five in. You have your War Machine. You have Grab Slam. You've got Tempest. Zero, a kill off of having the Vision Pulse vision as well. You've got everything to use. Now, if you're a FaZe Clan, you just need one big break to get inside. They're trying to push the flank, but you see that number three on the minimap is Karma. He's playing towards hole in the wall and still just being annoying for them to try and get through. Finally, they'll pick that up, but at the same time, Celium falls on the flank. Now the big push through broken. You've got all five players here. Yeah, this will be the next chance for the onslaught. Can you get a seam in there? Can you use the war machine effectively? You know Optic will be ready for it. 
But will they be ready for this slam? Asim gonna go high. They back away. They get behind Pillar. Nice teamwork from Opti to avoid that Zuma. Is able to get the sushi. Karma again able to find two. Yeah, it looks so similar. A little bit of deja vu to what we saw earlier. But Celium lines up three. In the back, keeps them basically square. is oh, gonna oh, grab oh. slam the truck, just get one. He's traded out almost immediately. TJ, 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 lighting it up. As that's now six in a row. And basically a clean wipe of the phase roster is Optic a chance to get their first map on the board with a five life advantage. Yeah, they used the Vision Pulse, allows them to push on up. Only one set of pushes left for FaZe. Zero does find one. Asim, though, gets taken down. 10 versus four, and I mean, for FaZe on that push, just so staggered time and time again. They did not use their specialist well. You do have, what, everything up, but Zero goes down. Not able to use the Vision Pulse, that's gone. Zellium has the Tempest, won't matter. Scraps has the War Machine. Is that going to matter at all? It doesn't. Like it. DJ goes on a couple of big sprees. Yeah, he's, again. he's 19 to 21, too. He's like, what, 9 and 1 on his last couple of lives? What a run from TJ and Optic. Still alive in this series behind a clutch. Game 3 win. We're not done yet, Joe. Yeah, this is the scary part now if you're phased. We always talk about it. Teams like 100 Thieves, the United, Optic, you just want to put them away. Give them that 3-0. Don't allow the momentum and hype to start to build for Optic. But now we go to a, what, a Hacienda Harpoint. Phased, I, I mean, they're picked, but it's a it. good one for Optic. Yeah, I believe they're... I believe they're 2 0 here, but we're going to take a look at Delta before we get into that map four. It's LG UYU. It's 1 1. We're into round four of the search and destroy. Formal POV. And a reminder. Oh, why did I say SD? I saw 2 1 round four, sir. What am I saying? Round four of the control. It's 30 and 10. That is absurd from Formal. But can they close out this game? And a reminder this is a loser's bracket match. The loser is done. Is they're ousted out of Anaheim. And we saw UIU, we casted, what, their United series yesterday, and they pushed them the distance to a map five. We saw some really nice plays from Mayhem. Yeah, I, I had a feeling Formal was going to be on one this weekend, just considering the changes going down, the swap to a Maddox, what he's capable of. But is it enough for Luminosity to make a loser? I don't know. No, I mean, I, I'm not really sure. No, yeah. I, I mean, just to update you as well on Bravo, 100 Thieves win map number one over, over Elevate, I believe, on Charlie. We have EG. We're actually going to switch to Charlie as well. All right, let's take a look at Charlie. Let's see what's going on there. I think we're it's Splice EG. I believe we're in a best play from Exotic on that side of things, but we'll get right over. Looney in a 1v5 spot. He's able to pick up two. Finesse with his life. Oh, my God. That's now three in a row. Can Looney pull this off? He's able to get back to full health. They line up in front of him. He's able to dip, dodge, and finesse. Oh, yes, yo, and now it's a one versus one. What is this from Looney? He still gets away. 30 seconds now on the clock. Phantoms versus Looney. Looney waiting. Looney the angle! Looney the 1v5! What is that? That was ridiculous. You don't see many of those. Now I'm glad we hopped around. Have we seen one? Not that I can think of. He, I mean, he had one of the few 1v4s. Remember on Payload like early in the Pro League, but... Well, that was an uh, interesting spot to jump into. That was absolutely insane. Looney with a bit of brilliance there at Rock and the Search to Destroy. That was some sensational stuff out of him. As, yeah, we talked about LG struggle. They're trying to make a run splice in that conversation as well. But we'll get back to the, the big one here on the main stage. Optic first phase. If you're just joining us, phase go up 2-0. Well. They 100-point club Optic in map one. They beat him in a round 11 in map two. The gridlock control, though. Optic bounce back. Can they rip off three straight and take this series and move into the top six? It's always tough, right? We talk about the importance of Search and Destroy because when you play against the top teams in the world, it is so difficult to take three respawns. So FaZe, to us, did the hard part. They're able to take map number two. They get to Hacienda. This is their map choice. We'll see if they can close this series out. Are we going to a game five? Hard point. Hacienda. It is FaZe Clan's pick. Optic looking for a bit of revenge as they were absolutely annihilated on the map one. Can they get it to that final search and destroy? 
Zero has been so good with the ICR since that swap. He'll be a factor throughout top halls and top map control in this, but Dashi puts the seam down and continues to fight for that rock side control. Really not much time through for either team in the opening 40 seconds of this hard point. Yeah, I think uh, really the story from map number one, I, I mean, there was a lot of people that struggled on Optic, but it, when we saw Optic do well in Hardpoint, it was Crim6 who, who had a, a couple of great games. And this is one where you want your ICR to be able to control the map, and he is going to have a tough test against Zero and Celium when they pull out that double ICR setup. Optic, a very slight edge, up 16 to 10, and there we go. Crim able to find two. They should be able to lock down Garage early on. He still has some forward progress, though. Zero somehow stays alive in that corner. He's still alive. That's going to allow FaZe to get on in. What a play from Zero. A seam tax one in as well. And that's going to be the all clear as they'll get into the hard point. Now, you still have the back spawn for Optic Gaming, but what a break from FaZe and what a fancy bit of footwork, bit footwork there from Zero. I mean, 9 and 2 on a 5 streak. Can he find some streaks early on in this? Trying to stay alive. He does have some help from Scraps. Here's the thing, I mean, when you're, you're playing this corner time and time again, you're giving up time. Trying to find any angle. Once again, I'm put in a situation where he has to try to stay alive. He might just not challenge. He might back away. We know how good Shreesh can be on Hacienda. Waiting for a freebie, and there it is. Nice patience from Zero to get the streaks. Now Lightning, Hellstorm, locked and loaded. Well, they can use this right away. I mean, this is a nice setup from Optic Gaming. You have one player back shed. You have one who was at well. That's Dashi who's just going to back away. But they might just use that lightning strike right off the start. Well, zero streak is still going. Six in a row for him. They're just so far away. Go. They're so far pushed out. This is the opening they're looking for. Does it connect on anybody? Skump is going to fall. Everybody else from Optic able to stay up, but a chance for a seam to get into the hard point. Takes down Crim6 from behind. Dashi, though. With the instant trade, as Optic will retain control of the hard point. They survived their first streak, and it it seemed you didn't really like the no, positioning no, no. I, from Faze. Yeah, you have to get some map positioning there. You're so far away where Optic Gaming, they're spread out. The lightning strike was obviously not going to connect with multiple players. He still calls it. I, I guess the one good thing for Faze, it allows Contest. It sort of breaks this setup a little bit, but Optic got most of that time. Now bolstering this lead. Up 40 points. Still a 12-4 and four start from zero. Scraps trying to leave his mark in this series. We talked about how early he got here to start warming up, but I feel like you haven't really seen his presence, his display of skill yet within this series. Does he have a big game in him here in map four? Scump and Dashi string yeah. together a couple of kills, and Zero's going to instantly answer with the Hellstorm. Two, three, Zero with the play. Right into Rock they go, and now a chance to start building this comeback. Yeah, they got to be able to lock this down now. You Woo. use your streaks. You at least want to tie this game up, go into that second row. Jesus, you know, zero. Everything going right right now. 17 and four on another five spree. Obviously, three of those from the. Just stay away four. from him. Stay away from him. What a run from zero. Finally, Joe, he's going to fall, but what a tear he is on. He has 19. That's like three of his players combined at he this almost, point. Almost has vision pulse. <laughs> that is uh, certainly wild. But even though Zero's having that performance, it's still a lead for Optic Gaming. Up 32 right now. Into the second set of rotations we go. In the hard point, it'll be Crim6, the kill feed, lighting up green as they get a nice setup in the early going. They've got mid-map control. They've got rock control. You feel good about their positioning on the map right now early. And the opening hard point. I mean, yeah, you, you see zero, 19 and six, but look at the rest of yeah, the top right. I mean, four go down again. Scraps finds a kill, but everybody negative. Just feels like since that game three, it's been all off the gaming. Dash, he's going to connect with two. That's going to be a lightning for him. Can he find the third? There's another player up there. That's going to be zero. You know, he's hitting a shot as well. He is snapping right now, but that one not going to be able to connect. The flashy plays are there, but finally runs out of steam. But the lead for Optic once again growing. The kill feed once again lighting up green. 
If they had, look at this, they have backside court control, they have rock control, they have a player in the hard point, and as long as they can retain this, the spawns are gonna be so deep, so deep. Look at where that six pops. I mean, you're basically at fences now, trying to fight over, as Scump continues to make plays at rock. Finally, as they get those kills in that position cleared out, a bit of a closer spawn now for FaZe Clan, but the damage at this hard point's been done. 20 seconds already off of it. And now behind the tack five, can TJ find some streak? Seven, the off, and the snap is there. Turn, burn, a seam back on spawn, and a lightning for Optic Gaming. Yeah, this is just the opposite of game one. I mean, we talked about putting a, a team like Optic away, and this is the reason why everybody's stepping up when they need to. A lot of streaks on the board, a 100-point lead. It's looking like we're going to head to a map five as Dashy he continues as he finds three more kills, and here comes the green wall. Up 120. Three streaks to use. TJ has been on one. Lightning strike going to be called in from Dashy. What can he pick up? Everyone gets pushed back into Shed, but that's an opening for their player in the back to get position. That's Scump trying to find the angle, but he's tagged up instantly and has to get out. Nice one-on-one -on -one win there against Zuma, but it's still going to be phased in the hard point for now. Their number's dwindling, but they have the close spawn towards well. TJ calls in a Hellstorm. That's three that are going to drop. Scump and his teammate falls. But can you get anybody into the hard point? They still haven't been able to apply much pressure there. Most of the time to phase. Yeah, I mean, they made it so they didn't get a perfect hole, but Optic not really getting any time behind this. Uh, I mean, similar to what we saw from phase on that first rotation, but Woo. Optic, Scump, Dashy should be able to find that last kill. And zero, they do. So you can fight for this scrap time when you're this close to winning. And on rotation, inside a garage, TJ's able to win one. Dashy, Krim. Bottom bar. Now here comes the pinch on the rock. Just one player there. That's going to be scraps. He's going to get taken care of. And now you have Karma with his grab. You have Karma with grab. You've got the vision pulse ready to go. The war machine ready to go. To pull off the comeback, you've got everything building really on the side of phase clan. But the deficit seems too magnificent right now. Down 80. But with 30 seconds remaining on Rock, you think they'd have a chance to get some more time. But once again, a streak going to clear them out of the hard point. But there's Scraps now with the War Machine. They need to get all this time. They got to try to get into the hard point. Now it's Karma over the top. The grab slam comes up empty. Not able to connect in the fashion he'd like. And then it's a seam that gets to. So War Machine used. Grab slam used from FaZe. And you only are going to get, what, 20 seconds or so out of that? Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, it's not a lot. I, I guess the one good thing for FaZe, they've held on, right? I mean, it, a, a lot are used. They use all the streaks. There's no more left for it, Optic. It feels like not a lot of time was earned for either side between yeah. Fences and Rock, right? Just a lot of clearance from the hard point due to streaks and specialist usage. But now there's 50 more points needed for Optic Gaming. Scraps locates a pair. I will say, though, man, I, I, the kill feed has gotten a lot more white. Just at phase, really starting to heat on up. Is it too late, though, Joe? Is it too late? Krim was able to earn a lightning, so they'll have that utility if they need it. That's four down for phase. Five down for phase, and Optic back into the hard point. And once again, they'll have that mid-map control, and Scump will be controlling Rock. This is exactly what you want. He did such a brilliant time last time through, but it's Celium that's able to hit the slide, and this time more of an opening for FaZe Clan in transition. But Optic so close to putting this out of reach. Crim6 at 24 and 17, a much better hard point than we saw in game one. He earns a lightning and calls it in instantly on rotation. Does that give them a little bit of breathing room to the hard point? It looks like it will for at least a moment. Yeah, Dashi's going to have the Tempest. We'll see when he uses that. But Dashi right now, 31 and 17. On a five spree, does get taken down, but it's TJ's time with the War Machine. OK. Well, that so time phase, didn't last yeah. long, Joe. Yeah, FaZe hanging on. And yeah, you don't have much, really, just the Tempest for Optic. This has to be a perfect game, though, for FaZe the rest of the way. The Optic pinch coming in, FaZe. So far up to the task. Celium holding little room. But as the back line falls, he's got to make the play. And he's able to do just that. Three there for Celium. One more push from Rock, one from Water. He's not able to get the streaks. And now with Optic Gaming in for a moment, 
gets phased and answers almost instantly, just making it difficult for them to get these final 15 points. And you mentioned perfect, because you have to worry about this final scrap time. You have to worry about the rotation defenses. Yeah, just look at the map. I, I mean, because Optic put one more hit at, hit at that, FaZe had to fight for it. So Optic has fences control. You already have Karma in a great position, moved up towards fence. Tack five in from Skump. Five seconds away now, are we, from forcing a game five. We'll see if Optic Gaming is able to hold on. This should be it. There's the hold, and there's the game four. Optic making the run and getting us to the final search and destroy. Well, we talked about the map picks. That was phases. Now we go to an Optic Gaming search and destroy. So you got to be feeling confident but a much better hard point from Opti than we saw in game number one. Yeah, I mean, FaZe brought it back towards the end, made it competitive, but the opening, it felt just like the opposite of map one, like you said during the cast. Like, FaZe came out hot map one, put him on the back foot. Optic come out hot, do the same thing to FaZe, but Optic have got one reverse sweep in their bag this weekend. They were able to do it against units. Can they do it here against FaZe? Or can FaZe come up with a massive upset game five next? Call of Duty World League is brought to you by Astro Gaming, the official headset and mix amp of the CWL. And Jack in the Box, the official restaurant of the CWL.
gentlemen, the time has come. I can't believe what we're witnessing. Are you serious right now? Welcome back, Anaheim and Joe. Here we go, buddy. Math 5, Optic, Phase. Crowd, are you ready for this? It's early on day two. What a match we've got. It feels like that old Optic, Phase rivalry brewing yet again. I could not be more excited, but for Optic, this year you are 9-4 and four in game fives. And Joe, you mentioned something to me during the break that you thought what bolstered, what projected that win for 100 Thieves was their reverse sweep at Gen G at London. You feel like this could be something similar for Optic. I mean, it's just such a confidence booster, right? Like going down 0-2 in a series and the winner's bracket, a tough match. It just gets that blood going. It gets that confidence in one another that you can do it under any circumstances. So yeah, I think if, if you're an Optic Gaming fan, you, you win this one, there is a good chance you're holding that trophy towards the end of the weekend. For FaZe, you get the win. You silence the doubters. Frequency map 5-0. Paladin in hand, mid-map, looking for the pick. And remember, this is Optic's pick for the game five, search and destroy. But they drop that game two in round 11, heartbreaking fashion. A very slow round from, from Optic Gaming to start. I mean, FaZe had a ton of players inside of A towards that elevator, but they rotated off of this. They're towards B. So Scrap's playing for information. He's going to get it here soon. Zero has found nothing. They see nothing at B, so they have to know they're towards this A side. Wow. Zero hit down to 14. I believe that was TJ challenging him right away, but here comes FaZe on the five. Nice Zero shot from Zero. Be able to find it on the dashy. One hell of a pick, and now the man advantage to FaZe. His optics still looking for an opening. Now multiple players on the flank. Crim6 caught in top window. Karma can't win his one-on-one. -on -one. They're getting picked apart. All five for FaZe still on their feet. Scrap's not the best game, too. Able to find a kill early on. That's got to help. But hold on. Scump TJ. What is that? TJ with two. What is that from TJ? And now Scump in a one versus two. Bomb getting planted at A. Gives him a chance. He has a stun as well. Can they somehow pull off this two? V5. Can the king clutch? And the way they're playing this around zero sniper. He's watching top balcony. I mean, Scump's playing this perfectly. He's gambling that they're not on the defuse. They just hop it. They're on it. Scump. They're I, on I it. think he just thinks they're going to watch they're it. They're on it. And but there's the defuse. Faze able to stick it. Scump goes for the gamble. But Faze hop it and make the play. But wow, did that get interesting from a 2v5 to a 1v2. TJ will see the shot from his POV. What the hell was that? I don't know. We'll see it right here. I, I mean, Scump <laughs> finds the first shots, and then TJ just smokes him. But it doesn't matter because the, the round goes the way of Faze. And it starts with zero with that pick on the dashy. We'll see now what phase brings on offense. Dashy gonna bring out the big gun. Zero once again looking for information mid map, spotting nothing. Crim6 can't finish the kill. A nade comes in, just gets away with his life. A seam will get up to the top balcony challenge as well. So they've cleared Optic out for now, and they've got the bomb planted. Now a five on five Someone was throwing an aid towards the back. I think that might have been Dashy. It doesn't connect. He gets caught. He gets caught. Dashy going to get first blooded in back to back rounds. Advantage still to FaZe Clan. Scraps holding the corner. He's able to get the kill with the cluster with the Maddox as well. TJ's going to challenge, but it's just not enough. It's FaZe. Now up 2 0. Just starting with those first kills, and then the trades are coming in. But so far, I, I mean, what we've seen is is really FaZe just taking control of, of where they want to go. There's not a lot of pressure mid-map. We'll see what adjustments Optic make. Remember? They've got to make some, you feel yeah. right? they got to. Because that's now a clinical offense and defense from FaZe in a but, mode that they have struggled mightily. I, I will say that when Optic finds success on offense, it's, it's typically behind Dashy, right? Finding a pick. The sniper rifle. 
finding that open pick. Usually, like, TJ and Karma working top middle. And then Dashi doing his thing. The same start for FaZe, where they send three towards elevator. They have a couple of players in window. And a very slow start once again for Optic. It looks like they're not even giving Dashi a shot. Not even giving him an angle. Zero just about spots one top window. Did they give him a peek? It's TJ pushing forward for information. He's going to play aggressive. It's Dashi looking over him. Now it looks like he's a three-man hit, but they're all here for FaZe. They're all here. TJ at least able to pick up one. Finishing the kill is Dashi, but it's going to be a two versus two. Or a two for two. Dashi, what a melee there with the Strife. Advantage to Optic. Scraps left in a one versus three with 40 seconds to go. He's 375 off streaks. Can he find the kill top mid? Karma just holding it. What a bit of timing for Scraps. He can't finish it, though. It's Karma that's able to snap as he smokes Scraps in a round for Optic. Yeah, but that, that, that round to me is dashy, and we're going to see this play. I mean, it's a three versus three here. Somehow TJ gets the trades, and then when his teammate goes down, a one versus one against Selium, the shot melee comes through for Dashi. Okay. It's perfectly timed. It gives them the three versus two. They can play the man advantage. And FaZe are set up for that exact thing. Yeah, no, I, mean, they're, they're, I just they're I don't know waiting. how TJ gets that kill. Like that trade, the kill trade that comes in. I, I don't know how that happens. Yeah, you think with two people shooting at him, he's going to drop Jeez. before he gets it, right? But TJ shooting nukes right now. All right, we're seeing A aggression this time from Optic. Zero with a snipe near Dashi. Dashi's just going to back away. You have Selium watching the back elbow. See what these snipers can find. But it looks like FaZe is going to rotate towards B. It's going to be a seam and Zuma. They might push this out. The help was there in the form of Skump, though. And I believe that's going to be Dashi. It's starting to wrap back towards this side as well. He's got a nade. They can push behind the nade. Is it going to connect? No. Look close, Zuma. but Zuma able to slide away. They keep shouldering. They're giving Dashi a chance. Just can he hit the pick? Skump's going to get aggressive behind it. Bottom middle will be Karma, but he's going to get his head ripped off. TJ at the same instant gets a kill as well. Not going to be able to do it with the Paladin, but maybe once again with the strike. A team kill from Crim6, though, keeps it interesting. 2v3 now for FaZe. Sub 30 seconds on the clock. Zero's got to hit a shot. And there was his chance. Comes up empty. TJ sitting alive, bottom ladder. We'll give him that early rotation. You have one player working top mid, that's Scraps. The European duo, what can they find? They're not gonna find anything. Zero and a one versus three. Dash! Wow! Holy! Peekaboo! What a shot there from Dashi, and we're now all square. And I mean, for FaZe, you, you go right into the trap that Optic's setting up. You have nobody. Oh, inside. Lordy. Oh, Lordy. You have nobody top middle. And what happens is they just go into B, right? And, and Optics stay alive. They take control of top mid. TJ with a nice trade. I thought Zuma was gonna get away with his life, but TJ being able to find it. So you're seeing the adjustments you want out of Optic to bring it back. Much better map position on that defensive round, but right. FaZe go right back. This is their, their sort of their default strat. They are willing to retake towards that B side. Ooh, almost, but doesn't hit the flick. I think Zero put away the sniper in this round as well, so he's going to have ICR out. Playing a similar position, but just no snipe in hand. Control of the B site goes to Optic. They'll likely start to work this bomb down. They're going to do that now. Skump will get the plant. Now can FaZe get the retake? Optic looking for three rounds in a row. The slide comes across, stun in hand. He might get caught, but somehow able to stay up. Buys himself some time for the rotation now to come through. Skump re-peaks, re-challenges, but will get caught. Nice stun through to catch TJ as well. Dashy now left on an island. The flood comes forward and phase a big, big response after Optic started to roll. Yeah, you saw what was happening. So you had a, a two-man setup from Skump and TJ down low. Skump was really the point man, watching the push from Pipes. And TJ had to worry about not only the trades afterwards, but the drop behind him. And because Skump goes down, that player pushes forward. TJ gets caught in a tough spot. I mean, you're in a three versus five at that point. And you're going to see it from Zuma here. I mean, it's just easy. When you have control of bottom, la bottom ladders, it's so difficult I to thought, get an angle on the bottom. for a while, Scump had just bought enough time there. Like, I thought he was going to get caught, what, two, three we different times. He didn't finish the kill. He didn't finish the kill. Yeah, yeah. Zuma, who was so good in that map, too. 
multiple clutches, double digit performance. Sitting at five and two right now, leading the way for FaZe. On the other side, it's been TJ all series long. He's six and four. The Iceman going big in the map five. Very similar to what we saw for FaZe last offense. Two men pushing towards B. Shaggy though, so quick, able to find the one onto a C man, gets away with his life, has to help this Canadian duo his, in Karma. His reactions, dear lord. Yeah, he's pretty quick. But that's the first blood, and, and now if you don't have a sniper in Zero's hands, how do you get back into this round? Not a lot of time to work with either. Maybe you wait on Celium. You see number seven sort of playing on an island right now. Trying to get any information he can towards elevator. Phase is going to rotate this back. So it's on Krim to just stay alive, get, get the information. I'm going to see it here in a second. Celium versus Krim. And there we go. That's all Krim needs, and he's holding it. Has a nade from TJ. That cluster is going to back them down. Yeah, yeah, buys eight, more time. Five seconds. Buys more time. And there's another kill for the Optic side as Krim6 does his job at top balcony. Dashi involved in the mix as well. Skump finds one more. Final player is Zuma, and it's TJ on the hunt. Back and forth we go. Yeah, and I, I guess the, the big thing is, is Optic staying aggressive. They're, they're keeping that point, man. It was Dashi. Typically, he's the guy who has a sniper back pipes, but this time him and Karma push up towards pipes. They're able to catch out a seam. And that first blood, like, I, I yeah. thought, because he didn't hit that corner of the slide, like, he just kind of hopped around. I thought he was getting caught. Like, I thought there were two players there that were going to rip him apart, but such a quick snap. Display of individual talent, and that brings us to 3-3. Three, three. As Dashi now pushes out to 6-3, and three, and back to the pallet he goes. He should have a shot here. Here they come, and my god! Zero's head removed! Phase is here, though. They have four men here. They can push this out, and it looks like they're going for it. Can they trap, trap Optic inside of pipes? Karma trying to stay alive. It's a three versus three. One man working top middle. That's going to be Krim, but here we go. Here's the push from Phase, but they're going to go down. Now a four versus two. Four versus one. Scraps the last man up. He's got a cluster to use, but he's in a one versus three. I, I just don't think he saw that player, so he's not going to throw it. Looks a little bit easier from our POV with the X-ray, that's, that's for sure. Does he even go for this? I don't nope. think he is. Off the map. Another round to Optic. And another first blood for Dashi. He has dominated in that department. So quick. And I mean, phase. they go for that blind counter. Well, just Five, think, man. Think of the last two first bloods he get. Like, they're just absurd. There's The snipe, look at this flick. Just... Ding dong, your head is gone. Woo. Two more rounds now needed from Optic to complete the, re complete the reverse sweep. Phase slowing it down here. Optic get elevator control. Zero trying to play sneaky. Thrones across trying to find a pick. He's able to pull it back out, but. That's going to let Karma know. I'm just going to back away now. This is such a big round for a phase. They need this one. And Selium, who's been their most consistent player, not having a great game five at two and seven. I think they need some massive rounds out of him at the tail end of this if they're going to have a chance. And again, you just have nothing. And then look at what Dashi and Karma are doing. They're going. This could be a big play on rotation. Does Dashi get caught? Does Dashi get caught? He does. Karma's going to have to back away. He has a nade in his hand. So finally, a first blood for FaZe. But TJ, Dashi, both going to get taken nice push down from and it's just nice that push rotation. From FaZe. Yeah. The flank's coming through. The timing is awkward. They're wrapping back at the same instant. And Optic Gaming get caught. A huge, huge round from FaZe Clan to, what, silence the crowd a bit, silence the Optic fans, get back into this. Don't allow that fifth round on the board for Optic. Yeah, I think Optic just thought they had them stuck in elevator. And I think there was maybe one player inside of there that was giving Optic some information. So what that tells Karma and Dashi is we can go, right? We can set up this pinch and, well, the rotation with 40 seconds left. They were just they were able to pay it. off. They yeah. were not expecting it. They thought for sure they were committed to that A-bomb site. Tensions building as we get deeper 
into this map five, into this best of five series, 4-4. Four, four. The game two was around 11. Hell, why not give us one more? Dashi holding mid with the Paladin. Phase starting to layer towards mid map. Yeah, you have a couple of passive offense again for Optic. Yeah, a couple of players bottom ladder. Oh, a little bit of a tickle. And again, FaZe willing to play this retake towards the B side. Karma gets some information. And Zuma Nassim down low. 50 seconds to work with. What's going to be the play call? See, here's the thing. When you have this sniper, you can rotate him towards this A side. He can watch balcony. He can watch back elbow. This will allow them to push on up. There's the call. They're waiting for Scump to rotate back in Crimson to find the first blood. A big pick mid-map. Two bunched up back balcony, though. Asim is able to get that kill. Frag out to try and back him out, Ali. It's not going to connect, but gives him a bit of breathing room to get the bomb down. And that'll be the plant. Now four versus four. TJ and Skump patrolling balcony and bomb side. Dashi and Krim controlling elevator. Krim sticks another kill, a huge round nine from him. Great timing for Dashi, top mid, and Celium and Scraps. Now in a two versus four, Skump gets a spot check on a bomb, knows they're safe, finds the kill. Scraps, though, still alive, just not enough time. Round to Optic Gaming. One more. And they've got the reverse sweep. And that round reminded me a lot of what FaZe did on Arsenal, right? Like, they go for the long flank, but they don't wait for it. They do not wait for that player to go all the way around. A player gets, top, gets caught top mid by Crim6, giving them the man advantage. You were waiting for Scraps to push through that orange base, maybe to clear the window, but they just go without that information. This is the same spot we were in map two. 5-4 yep. lead to Optic. Phase go back to back. Can they do it again? They've got to get this offense. Let's go Let's go Karma and Dashi. Patrolling the B-side bomb. Dashi sniper put away for this round. He found that first blood onto a seam in a similar situation a couple rounds ago. Can he get another first blood? Let's see information. Spotted Zuma's shoulder. Here comes the push. So it seemed the first one in. First blood for Dashi. They both back away. They're trying to play their life. Five versus four now. So many first bloods for Dashi. Now nine and four. And, and this is so similar to what they had to do. They get up to B, but they lose a man. Now you have to rotate towards A. And guess who's here? It's Crim6 himself, who can just watch that balcony once again. One player jumps top middle. Zuma. Oh, oh my god. Nope. Okay, so they're going to spot him. Or are they? He's able to find one. He wraps back. He's able to get the kill top middle. Can they isolate him? It's still Crim6 top window. Can Zuma win this oh, one missed, on one? He his mantle. He's got the stun. He, he stuns himself. He stuns himself, and then Scump gets the kill. Three versus four. 40 seconds on the clock. Zero wins a big one on one. They isolate another in the back. Now 2v2. Two 35 seconds to push to Crim6. He's at least able to get one. One versus one. Scump. Selium. Scump goes in, Scump goes in, tagged up, backed up. It's Selium with the cover, and Scump's gonna have to back away Got for the now. Maddox, the Maddox advantage. Scump goes through, and Scump stabs with the one on one, and Optic with the reverse sweep. I, I would love to rewatch that if we can. I, I think Selium just gives up his advantage. Just gives it up. I mean, what a great series. Scuff goes big. But Celium played it so well until that final moment. It looks so hard for Scuff. For yeah, me. I mean, he like, comes like, what do I do? What do I do for yeah, this spot? You have he the gives up his cover. He gives the up manager. the desk and then just gets ripped. As Optic get three straight, take the series, move into the top six. And Teep lets him know what a big one-on-one -on -one for Scump. FaZe had the chance up 2-0 in the series, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at the end of that one versus one. I mean, FaZe did a wonderful job. Somehow, Zuma able to find the opening, finds the kill, stays up. TJ doesn't want to overcommit, was open if, elevator. If he gets this stun in the window. Well, if he hits that mantle right there, he, he misses that. he hits this stun or the mantle, he probably gets a kill. He probably gets a kill. Zero 
able to bring it back in a three versus three. This forced a two v two. Things were looking pretty solid for FaZe. But here we go. It was such a back and forth one versus one. This gives Scump the advantage, but now Celium plays it so well behind this desk and, well, just gives it up. Slides right towards the end. I think if he holds here, it's done. It's over if he holds that. Now he slides forward, Scump goes on in. And Dashi, the man with the first bloods, the king of the map five is on stage for your PlayStation. It's the reaction. Thank you, Clint. During this match, the casters called this matchup one of the greatest rivalries in Call of Duty, and indeed, you beat FaZe the previous two times you faced them. How does it feel to beat them a third time? Uh, it feels great. Obviously, they're a really good team. Uh, I'm just glad that we kept composure after going down 0-2. We showed a lot of resiliency, so I'm just really proud of the team. What was the issue on the first hard point? Um, I mean, they're a, good, they're a good respawn team, so they just came out swinging, and they just took the map. They were playing really well, so you got to give them credit for that. Finally, do you have anything you'd like to say to this amazing crowd that we have here? Love the green wall. Green wall is awesome. Thank you very much. Shout out to Josh. <laughs> yeah, the green wall is awesome. We appreciate the support. Um, they've been incredible all year, and we're super thankful for them for sure. All right, well, thank you so much. This has been your PlayStation Into Reaction. Over to Katie at the desk. Thank you, Jess, and what a reverse sweep there from Optic Gaming to take down FaZe Clan and continue their winner's bracket run. Your desk is back. I'm your host, Katie Bedford, joined by Nameless Study and Pac-Man. And Pac, really quick, I just want to get your opinion on the end of that SD game five, because you took issue with what Selium did. I took issue with actually with what both players did. Yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, obviously Scum won a huge gunfight, but in that scenario, he showed Selium that he was going to be fighting that last gunfight. By that, I mean, Selim had to make a decision. Am I going to go check bomb? Am I going to stay here? But Seth showed himself, showed so now him. Selim knows, oh, all I have to do is play my life and win this gunfight. With that time, he could have, one, held the desk, or two, the better play would have been sliding outside the back door and just throwing shoulders, make Seth chase him down. Even if Seth gets a kill after chasing him down, he wouldn't have had time to get back to the bomb and get the defuse. But instead, he just fought a straight up 1v1 gunfight after Seth showed himself here. So see here, if I'm Seth, I back up. So make Selim make a decision. But instead, he pushes him, adrenaline pumping, obviously. And Selim here, look. Right there, should have right here. Away. He could be gone through the back door. Just run. Back out through the door. Or hold it. Yeah, or hold it, but he does like some in-between decision, and that cost him, that just cost him that 1v1 situation. One thing about FaZe Clan is their mid-game adjustments. We saw them even on that second map. It was tied 3-3. They got it to a 3-3 situation. They were playing that B-bomb site. Once they took out both of those players at the B-bomb site, the first thing you should do is immediately get that bomb down. And because you have the control of the bomb site, you shouldn't be able to wrap back with 40 seconds left to catch them off guard at the A-bomb. Totally cost them. We see them in the SDs when they're really aggressive just taking these rounds. When they start to play those rounds really slow is when they start losing them, and it definitely cost them in this series. Yeah, great example is when they three hit that B street and a seam stop to go through elbow. If he yep. were to just commit there and let his teammates push up for the trades, they would have been in a great situation to win that round. Instead, they try to drop back after they lost a player. They get cut off. They lose that round as well. So there's just a few things that I think caused the phase that map, as well as the dashy pistol whip kill he got inside of you. Yep. If he, if he gets killed right there, I think that they might secure that round. It's a completely different story. Study, when you were competing, you sniped a lot. So looking at Zero and Dashi's performances in that series, what do you think of them? That was a great performance out of both of them. The only thing is, Dashi took more risk than Zero did. Zero was like a standard kind of sniper. He's going to these regular angles that usually everyone is expecting. Dashi, he was just getting freaky with it, like, like I like to say, just going to places that you don't really expect, and that's what was catching them off guard, especially on that B-bomb site on Arsenal. He just jumped up and sniped Selium all the way in the back left corner, and Selium probably didn't even expect that. All right, we need to jump right